Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on scatter diagrams. So what is a scatter diagram? Well, a scatter diagram is a display of data which plots one variable against another. The scatter graph shows the relationship between two variables. The way in which the points are scattered identifies the connection or correlation between these two variables. So let's imagine we have two variables and we have some data to plot. The general independent variable, the variable that isn't influenced by anything, is on the x-axis, and the dependent variable, the one that is affected by the independent variable, is on the y-axis. The way in which the data is scattered will show how the data is connected. So here, if the data is scattered similar to this, we call this a positive correlation. A positive correlation shows this type of scattering and implies that variable 1 gets larger, as does variable 2. So now we know what a positive correlation is, let's look at a different type of scatter graph. So now let's look at some different data. Here the way in which the data is scattered shows another type of relationship between the variables. If the data is scattered similar to this, we say this is a negative correlation. This means as variable 1 increases, variable 2 decreases. So now we know what a positive correlation looks like, and we know what a negative correlation looks like, let's have a look at our last scatter diagram. Looking at some different data, here the way in which the data is scattered everywhere shows there is no correlation. So we now know what a positive correlation looks like, a negative correlation looks like, and we've also identified what no correlation looks like. Let's move on to the line of best fit. Well, the line of best fit is drawn so that the points are evenly distributed on either side of the line. There are various methods for drawing this exactly, but you'll only be expected to draw the line by eye. We use a line of best fit to estimate and identify the strength of a correlation. So looking at our graphs, let's insert the line of best fit. Try and get the line following the trend of the data points, so that we have an even distribution either side of the line. You don't have to be absolutely perfect when doing this, as it is done by eye. You can see here, it's not perfect, but we've pretty much aimed to get the same number of data points either side of the line. So now we have knowledge on scatter diagrams, and our correlations, and our line of best fit. Let's use this knowledge and look at some past exam questions. Here the question states that Mr. Kent's students did a math test and a science test. The scatter graph shows the marks of 12 of these students. Here are two more results. Show this information on a scatter graph. What type of correlation does the scatter graph show? David did the maths test. He was absent for the science test. David mark in the test was 15. Estimate a science mark for David. See if you can give it a go and press pause if you need. In the exam, the graph is printed very large for you to see, so plotting is much easier. Be aware of the scale when you plot. If you're more than one of these tiny little squares out, then you don't receive the mark if you inaccurately plot. So let's carefully plot Masood with a maths result of 12 and a science result of 14. I've plotted it here. Now let's plot Nima with a maths result of 17 and a science result of 20. I've plotted the result here. Now the question asks what type of correlation does this scatter graph show? Well, you can see the data points are plotted in this upward direction, just like our positive correlation. The question states, David did the maths test, he was absent for the science test. And we're asked to predict or estimate if he got 15 in his maths test, what would he have got in his science test? Well, if we're estimating, we must use our line of best fit. So remember, when drawing your line of best fit, Try and draw the line so the points are evenly distributed either side of the line. 
Remember, do it by eye and it doesn't have to be perfect. The examiner does have an allowance of line of best fits. From my line of best fits, I'm going to now use David's math test of 15 and read up till I hit my line of best fits. Reading across from here, I estimate David would get a science test score of 17.6 given his maths test score was 15. Just to let you know, in this exam question, as long as the line of best fit is shown and the working out lines from 15 and reading across accordingly, the examiner will allow any answer between 16 and 18. So you can see my answer receives full marks. Now let's have a look at another exam question. It states that the scatter graph shows information about the ages and values of seven Varley motor scooters. Another Varley motor scooter is five years old and it has a value of 300 pounds. We're asked to show this information on the scatter graph, describe the relationship between the age and the value of Varley motor scooters, and a Varley motor scooter is four years old. We're asked to estimate its value. See if you can give it a go and press pause if you need. Remember the graph will be larger for you in the exam and ensure you read the axes correctly because if you are more than one of these little squares out when plotting, you don't receive the mark. So let's plot our data value of five years old with a value of 300 pounds. Reading this carefully, I'm plotting my point here, carefully counting the squares and identifying where 300 is. Now we're asked to describe the relationship between the age and the value of Varley motor scooters. Now we're asked to describe the relationship, not the correlation. So the relationship is, as the age increases, the value decreases. Now the last part states that a scooter is four years old, and we're asked to estimate its value. Because we're estimating, we must use our line of best fit. Remember, to do it by eye and it doesn't have to be perfect. Following our trend, you can see this would be an example of a line of best fit. From my line of best fit, I'm going to estimate. So reading four years old up to my line of best fit, I can clearly see I have a value of 650 pounds. Just to let you know in the exam, as long as a line of best fit is drawn and you've shown your working outlines correctly, the examiner will accept any answer between 500 and 800 pounds. So clearly my answer gets me full marks. So let's look at our last question. Sally looks after a children's paddling pool in a park. Each day, Sally records the number of hours of sunshine and the number of children who use the paddling pool. The scatter graph shows this information. On another day, there were 8.5 hours of sunshine and 35 children used the pool. We're asked to show this information on the scatter graph. Describe the correlation between the number of children who use the paddling pool and the number of hours of sunshine. And on one day there were 50 children in the paddling pool and were asked to estimate the number of hours of sunshine. See if you can give it a go and press pause if you need. Remember, in the exam, the graph is printed very large for you to see, so plotting will be much easier. And always be aware of your scale when plotting, because if you are more than one little square out when plotting, you do not get the marks. So, let's plot 8.5 hours of sunshine and 35 children. Using my graph, I can see 8.5 is here and 35 is here. Now we're asked to describe the correlation between the number of children who use the paddling pool and the number of hours of sunshine. This is a positive correlation. It's different from the other question where we are asked to identify the relationship where we had to give a sentence. 
Here we're only asked to describe or identify the correlation. Last, it states that one day there were 50 children in the paddling pool and were asked to estimate the hours of sunshine. Because it's an estimate, we have to use our line of best fit. So drawing our line of best fit, trying to ensure our data points are evenly distributed either side of the line, I have this line of best fit. From the question, I have to identify where 50 children is on the axes. So you can see it here, and I'm going to read across. Now I can see it gives me an estimation of 10.4 hours. Just to let you know, in this exam question, as long as you've drawn a line of best fit and you've shown your working outlines correctly, the examiner will accept any answer between the range of 10 and 11 hours. So, in summary, we've gone through what a scatter diagram is and the different types of correlations. We've also looked at the use of a line of best fit, where we use it to identify the strength of the correlation and also make estimates ensuring that we show our working outlines. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next videos.